card, you can buy a two hundred fifty thousand dollar sculpture from George Lundy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so get out your card. Um, the Peace Corps. We've uh, been meeting with the deputy director of the Peace Corps for the last month. We've met twice, and we think there's a really great opportunity and synergy to work with the Peace Corps. The Peace Corps is having their fiftieth anniversary this year. Uh, one of the things we're thinking of doing is having a art competition. The Peace Corps will reach out to the people that they're working with and ask the art, local artists there to create an artistic piece that characterizes to them water and the importance of water. We'll have those art pieces entered into a contest. Uh, our Board of Artistic Advisors will judge those and we'll pick winners and we'll provide scholarships for the best students to go to the best art schools around. So there are all kinds of ways that we're using these partnerships that we have up here. With Dorsey and Whitney, international, very renowned law firm, uh, they're providing all of our legal services for us. We're thinking that those services are probably going to be well within the six-figure number. And uh, knowing what Tucker's billing rate is, it may be in the high six figures of legal services provided. Thank you, Tucker. We appreciate that. Um, Denver Rotary and the Denver Rotary Foundation has already donated 50000 in seed money to getting this started. Um, we're going to have an international board of art advisors. Uh, they will be made up. George Lundin has agreed to serve on that board with us. We're happy that we want to have international artists on board. We're looking for museum directors, board members, gallery owners, dealers, art critics, significant collectors, and people from academia and the best art schools around. We're going to work closely with galleries this time, and we think that, that will open up an entire area that we hadn't had before in terms of helping with our sales. We're a 501c3. So as we sell art or people buy art through AOW, they can get some tax benefits because some portion of what they're buying is going to a good cause, and that would be a tax write-off, uh, which would be an interesting impact on the value of the art. Um, May 2012 is the first time that we're going to have our, uh, our, our first uh, event. So it's uh, just a little over a year away, and we're getting geared up to do that. Um, we're working hard as a committee to do this. We've been meeting for about the last two years to set up a business structure that will uh, address all the issues and everything that we're going to be facing. So right now, what I'd like to do is have Dr. Ron Denham tell us about why we're doing this. Uh, Ron came to us today from Toronto. He's been a Rotarian there for 50 years. Um, he was educated in England, has a PhD in mechanical engineering. I don't know why he went to get an MBA. So he then went to work as a management consultant with KPMG, where he worked around the world, he traveled around the world. He's a professor on the faculty of York University. He's on the board of the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts. And he is on numerous Rotary task districts and task forces, and has gone around the world in chartering new Rotary clubs. This man, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much, Skip, for that introduction. And thank you all for coming out to hear me. Some of you hear me again, less than three, less than a month, and then others of you have seen much of this presentation, um, which was taken from uh, a TED event here at Denver University. <coughs> As part of the background, just let me um, put in context the organization which I represent within Rotary, WASRAC. It should really be called WASRAC, but that doesn't sound too good. I mean, WASRAC sounds bad enough. It is really, that is Water and Sanitation Rotarian Action Group. Um, but it should really be Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene, because that is the focus these days. But uh, we'd never get away with that. Even as it is, people are always saying, what a terrible name. And I say, yes, it is, but think of something better. Something which is easily translatable. Somebody came up with the uh, phrase, start with water. And I said, that's fine, but how do we translate that into French, Japanese, Korean, Russian, or any of the other languages? So we just stay with Washright 
set of acronyms. And um, Water Sanitation Rotarian Action Group is um, a group of individual Rotarians, all from Rotary clubs and districts around the world. We're represented in every one of the Rotary zones and about 80% of the districts. Individuals such as I, who want to bring safe water and sanitation to their communities and thereby enhance the quality of life and livelihood in those communities. Water isn't an end in itself. We want to further human development wherever possible. So we band it together. We work through and with Rotary Clubs. We don't do things directly ourselves except promote the cause and raise money. And the money, all the money we raise goes directly to a Rotary Club. Nothing is taken off the top. We're unique in that respect. If you contrast that with World Vision or some of these other very worthy and very wealthy enterprises where in some cases 20, 30 or even 50% of what you give goes to a project and you know not where that project is. With Rotary you can designate the community and 100% of what is given flows right through. We're unique in that. I don't some say unique. We're almost unique. There are other organizations in which 100% flows through. And we can do this because we're all volunteers. We have nobody, sorry, we have only one underpaid assistant who hasn't been paid for the last year and a half. The rest of us are volunteers and able to, I say, give something back to the community. Society has been good to all of us. We have directors, 15 directors from around the world, elected from the membership at, at large, one from New Zealand, two from Asia, two from Africa, two from Europe, two from Latin America, and the balance from North America. I'm the lone Canadian, and the only reason uh, I'm in this position is because uh, I guess I spoke up louder than any of the other people. Um, but I am only primus in the Far East. I have no authority whatsoever. I'm elected each year by the board, and as soon as they figure I've learned what I'm doing, they'll dump me so somebody else can continue the learning process. I'm starting this talk by why. And this is what I was, the way I was asked to start at DU at the TED event. Why is it that conditions like this obtain when there is so much money in the world to fund armaments, to fund bottled water? You know, it's been said that all the money that goes on bottled water is sufficient to address the worldwide water access problem. Why is it? In this stage, why is it that this Somali family, a nomad, and going from one water hole or water source to another, they've stopped here. And this is a depression in the road. There's been a rainfall. They're scooping up the water. As you can see, it's not very clean water. And in the background, one other member of the family, of the household, who also is going to drink if he or it hasn't already drunk, and done what other things animals often do when they're <coughs> near water. One does not guarantee the purity in that particular case. If you go to other parts of Africa, typically Kenya, if you go out from Nairobi to some of the local villages, this is the sight you'd see almost every morning. Women and girls going for six, eight, ten kilometers, I know, four to six, eight miles for a source of water, which they then carry back in their jerry cans to the village. The jerry cans hold about um, 20 liters, 44 pounds, and with the can itself, they're carrying 50 pounds. Many of you here will be challenged to even lift 50 pounds, let alone carry it for four, five, or six miles several times in the day. Many of these households have 10 members, plus or minus, and if they want 10 liters per person per day, you can imagine that these women and girls are spending all day going to and from a water hole. It could be a creek, it could be a pond, it could be a river. But in this particular case, the source of water is a mud hole in the dried up bed of a river. This poor kid scoops up the water in the can and then walks back. She's not a very happy girl. If she weren't doing this, she could be in school. She could be learning to read, learn mathematics, learn business, learn whatever is possible in school. The elder women could be teaching or they could be a 